Robert, thank you so much for being on thank with you. us today. Thank you. Uh, you're here today for, for a conference um, uh, in, uh, in Romania. I'm really Correct. excited to see how that goes. And thank, and thank you for, for being here. I think Romanian people appreciate it. Yeah. Um, one thing that I would like to talk, to, to start talking about, because as I, as I was talking to you beforehand, our main audience is young people that are, that are really looking for guidance on how they can how they can become financially free and become free as people and especially especially how has like how things go on they're very very confused so we were talking about that like kind of kind of emotional habits and how we were thought so let's start with that what do you think is the main problem that people have in their minds when it comes to the way they've been taught and and kind of like how they think about financial education as a whole that's a you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a story about my two fathers. My poor dad was a school teacher, yeah. very smart man. And my rich dad never went to school. And so the information, so starting at the age of nine, growing up in Hawaii, the information was different. The advice was different. So I think most of your viewers out there s sitting inside their head are the words from their mother and father. Go to school, get a job, pay taxes save money, buy a house because it's an asset, get out of debt, yeah. and invest in the stock market. That creates poor people. It's a hypnosis train going through your brain. So when people say, how do I change my life? Well, you change those words. I wouldn't go to school because you learn nothing about money in school. Ask, I wouldn't get a job because if I have a job, I'm an employee. And then I'd pay taxes and I don't pay taxes, and I don't save money, and I use debt to get rich, and I don't invest in the stock market. That's why I'm rich. And so the young people who are listening right now are saying, but that's what my mom and dad said. But that's what mom and dad say all over the world. So to the young people, I just say challenge or question what you've been taught. Because from the Bible, I'm not religious. Yeah. yeah the word becomes flesh. So if you say, go to school, and you say, but I'll learn nothing about money. Get a job, you become an employee. Yeah. If you're an employee, you work for money, I pay taxes. Then they tell you to save money. Why would you save money when the government's printing money? You know? And get out of debt. Well, debt is money. I use debt to get rich. Most people use debt to get poor and invest in the stock market. I don't invest in the stock market. So when you, when you wonder why so many people struggle financially, because they haven't challenged the hypnosis, the words, go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, get paid taxes. Until you question those hypnotic trances, you don't change. So when I was a little boy, I had poor dad and rich dad you know, saying, in your head. He's saying, go to school. My rich dad goes, what a waste of time that is, you know? Right. And the way my rich dad taught me is just playing Monopoly. You know, four greenhouses, one red hotel. I learned about money. I learned to be a capitalist, not an employee. I don't pay taxes. I use debt for money. And I don't, I don't invest in the stock market. And when I say that to adults, they get angry at me. So, well, that's what I've done. I said, well, that's why you're poor. But when I said to young people, you have a chance yet. You have a chance. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying question the hypnotic trance put in your head because that's what keeps people poor. And I think that's the advantage young people have, and you know that, because they haven't been brainwashed. Oh, they have been so, brainwashed, but they have a chance to change the brainwashing. They don't need to deny 30 years of their life. Correct. Because if you've been doing a job, and like if you're doing all those things, and now Robert is going to say this, then yeah. I, I either can deny that or deny 30 oh. years of my life. So it's a big, big problem. Right? Yeah, the old guys like me, they get angry at me. So I've done that all my life. I said, yeah, that's why you're poor. Yeah. And they go, and they get angry at me when... The economy doesn't exist out here. The economy exists in here. Yeah. And until you change the words, the words become flesh. If you get a job, you're an employee. If you save money, you're a saver. And why would you save money when they're printing money? And they say, invest in the stock market for your pension. 
well, why would you do that? Because that's how they get your money. And you know, get out of debt when guys like me are using debt as money. So question it, that's all I'm saying. So, and, and you're saying, I think it's in your book, you said when you accept, you, your rich dad told you when you accept a paycheck, your brain is dead or you stop thinking. And I think that's yeah. very powerful to people. So what, what do you think about that? Well, money is a powerful force, as you know. So my rich, when I was nine years old, growing up in Hawaii, I asked my rich dad to be my teacher, my mentor, you know, be an apprentice to him. He says, then I'll never pay you. He says, if I pay you, you think like an employee. And so, and wait a minute. So I had to think differently. And that's what I'm challenging the millennials right now is you have a chance yet. Don't wait till you're an old guy like me to find out my pension is gone. See, right now in America, Wall Street is robbing the pensions pension funds. of the school teachers, the firefighter, and police officers. So there's going to be millions of people like me, my age, who did all, they got a job, they work hard, they save money, they got out of debt, you know, and they put the money in a pension plan and it's all gone. <laughs> so what do you think are some of those... those I hate to laugh, but it's kind of funny. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for those people, it's very unfortunate. And they, they think their, their government and the system has their back, but that's definitely not the case. It's, it couldn't be further from the case, right? You got it. And You're being screwed. Yeah. And it starts by going to school. Yeah. And your parents tell you to go to school. Yeah. So and, and, my, and my rich dad said, what are you going to learn in school? About money, I mean, you know. You can learn to be a doctor or a lawyer, but you learn nothing about money. So what do you think are some of those right beliefs to have? Some of the right beliefs to have about money, about the way you create wealth, about the, the way you actually create the life you want. What would be some of the right ones? We know the bad ones. Go, go to school, get a job, all these well, things. Well, it's not right or wrong. You see, most people should be employees. Okay. Because most people, it's easier to be an employee. Like I, when I, I, I flew for the Marine Corps in Vietnam, and my poor dad wanted to become an airline pilot. He says, go fly for the airlines. And I said, no, I can do that. I, I could already fly. Yeah. Why would I fly for the rest of my life? Yeah. You know? He said, but you love flying. I said, yeah, but I want to fly for the rest of my life. I just wanted a bigger challenge. And a bigger challenge would be to be an entrepreneur because I'd have to learn new things. I'd have to learn 10 times more than ever than a, being a pilot. So for me, it was right for me to become an entrepreneur because I was really interested in learning about money and business and economics and all this. But most employees aren't. So for most people who are employees, they should get a job, work hard, save money, pay your taxes and right. all that. But entrepreneurs don't pay taxes. We don't save money. We use debt as money. And everything's different. And I don't invest in the stock market. But I had to pay the price, which was get my own education, not the stuff they teach you in school. So how do you know that you're meant to be an entrepreneur? Is there something that you need to feel? Is there something that you need to do? It can be trained to anybody. Like you said, not everybody needs uh, Some people are meant to be employees and want to do that, actually. They don't want to. Most people want to be employees. Okay. They want the paycheck and they want the pension. They want security. And I don't blame them. Yeah. But many people today don't have that choice. You know, if you lose your job, like my poor dad eventually lost his job. And then he realized going to school, getting a job didn't help him, he had a PhD. He, he, he didn't have the skills for the world. He stepped out of the academic world and onto the streets. You know, the cats ate him alive out there. He, most school teachers cannot survive in the real world. Not in my world at least, because they don't have the mental strength, spiritual strength, emotional strength, or the education to sustain the battles of being an entrepreneur. I have international businesses, thousands of employees. A school teacher, you know, they don't have that. They don't want that. But unfortunately, with, you know, with artificial intelligence coming and replacing more and more people, you yeah. know, soon Uber drivers will be out of jobs too. You because go, of Tesla and all these other ones that are creating, yeah. Yeah, you know, driverless cars. So all the truck drivers and all this, they're out of work. Which is the biggest category of employment in the USA. That's, I think that's right. Was it truck Big, drivers? Uh, drivers, yeah. biggest employment category. It's the biggest category for men. Yeah. You see all these men who are you know, John Wayne and Tarzan and Rambo, yeah. they're gonna be out of work. So what do you think, so let's say 
I'm, I'm 22 right now, or I'm 25, or I'm 30. Let's say I'm eight or 18. How, so I, let's say I, I, I work with myself and I start questioning my beliefs and I start realizing that I've been brainwashed and there's no real reason I should get a job, I should do all these things. And I, I might be in a situation because this is what most people do, they pay a lot of money for the education and they end it and then there's no job waiting for them. Because and they, they, and they learn nothing about money. And they have the worst type of debt, which is student, student loan, loan yeah, you that got, you cannot. Very smart young man. Yeah. yeah. So and they're like 130,000 in debt. So how do you recommend, because most people are in that situation and they're even more attuned to safety because now they have debt, so they're afraid. So what do you think that person should do? They've started to question their beliefs. They got it. They know, okay, I've been brainwashed. I know, but what do I do now? Yeah. Next. Well, not to be commercial about it, but yeah. you know, that's why I created the cash flow game. Yeah. It's the only game that teaches accounting. Yeah. And most people come out of school, they don't even know what accounting is. They say, oh, they, they taught me to balance a checkbook. I'm going, big deal, you know? You have to know assets and liabilities. You must understand taxes. The rich don't pay taxes. Yeah. And the rich use debt as money. So the question is, that's, that's what I had to do when I was in my 20s. I said, how is it the rich learn to use debt as money? That's a challenge, and the brain goes. Because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, you got it. And then, then how do they not pay taxes? And what you'll find out in my new book, Fake, is the combination of debt and taxes. You see, the more debt I use, the less tax I pay. Right. It's counterintuitive. And that works because you're creating jobs, or what, why? Why is that working? Where well, there's many, there's many reasons, okay. and that's why I have, I have the best tax advisors. The, the biggest thing for most young people is that our schools teach us to be ICs, inter, independent contractors, okay. or self-employed, or even if you're an employee, you're still an independent contractor who has a job. And you do it by yourself. You know, I, I think, you know, I think... I think much of, much of the young world is in the selfie world. You know, look at me, look at me, yeah. look at me. Whereas in my world, it's a team sport. I'm a rugby player. I go on the field with a team, toughest, meanest guys I know. And so you could, be the, you could be the A student from Princeton, but I go on the field with 15 tough men, kick your ass. And so the average guy is coming out there you know, like, oh, I got an A, I went to Princeton, I went to Harvard, and the corporate America comes out and they go, boom. So that's why when I talk to young people, I say, look, it's a team sport. So the first person I have is a bookkeeper. Bookkeeper is the lowest paid person on my team, but the most important. Right. The bookkeeper then keeps the accurate records that my accountant can use, and my attorney can use, and my banker can use. That's the combination there. And my banker, my attorney, and my accountant must work together as a team. Most people, their bankers, accountants, and attorneys don't work together as teams. Because in school, we're taught to take our tests on our own. If you ask for help, you're cheating. In my world, it's called cooperation. And what I found with most smart people, they don't know how to cooperate. Mm. They don't know how to ask for help. Because in their brains, that's cheating. It means you're stupid. It means you're weak. It means you're stupid. I, you know, I didn't have that problem because I was stupid in school, so I was asked for help. But the teacher says that's cheating. <laughs> and that's very interesting because I, I, I had the fortune to start a company when I was 16 years old, and that was exactly the mentality that I had. If I don't do everything well, if I'm not, if I'm not the person that has all the answers, I'm failing. And I was not the best student, so I, I didn't really stuck by the rules. And I think that's an interesting thing with you. What rugby taught you and being, a, and, and being in the, like, and Marine actually, Corps. Yeah, Flight. taught you. When we flew into combat, we flew in as, you know, sections of aircraft. Right. We flew Together. in as teams. That's the military. Yeah. So what do you think are some of the lessons that you learned doing those things? Rugby, pilot. Well, I, I look at most small entrepreneurs. I call it the selfie world. Like, oh, look at me. Oh, look at me. Yeah. The Instagram entrepreneurs, especially. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's just great. I'm the smartest. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I want the smartest attorneys, accountants, bookkeepers, bankers, politicians. I come at it as a team. 
just think about this. You know, it's like a basketball team. They're playing basketball. But you went to Harvard. You have a master's, a PhD. But you're playing against five guys. You know, I don't care how smart you are. Those five guys will kick your butt all day long. This is not in the movies. Bruce Lee cannot really beat 10 people in real life, that's right? That's right. But that's in, what in the movies, that's believe. that's what's perceived. Like if you're good enough, you can beat ten people. Yeah, that's in not real true. life, you're gonna lose every not time. In, not in the real, not in the corporate world. So I operate according to the rules of corporate America. Yeah, I don't operate according to the rules of employee America. They're different. The tax rules for corporate guys is less than employees. Employees pay the highest taxes. Yeah, guys like Trump and me pay zero. And people are angry Legally. at that, which is very huh? interesting. People are very angry at people that don't pay taxes, which is, again, a, a, a proof that people don't, cannot wrap their heads around that. Because they've been hypnotized and go to school, get a job, work hard, pay taxes. Yeah. Until they change those words, their lives are not going to change. So they get angry, but they're angry at the words in their head. Yeah. So what are some of the other things some, some key points that we could talk about from your new book. Because I know Rich Dad Poor Dad, you, you probably talked so much about that. It's, and it's a great book. I've read it when I was 15. And it's amazing that you've made accounting so interesting. Yeah. It's like a combination sure. between an amazing storyteller and accounting, which is not the combination you would think of. So right. I think when I look at it, I think that's the reason I've had so much success. Because people were devoted like like a story, but it was accounting. So you you tricked them. You, they You're ate. a very smart young man. So they you made them eat their broccoli by making it look yes. like a Big Mac or yes, something like yes. that. So amazing. So so we're not going to talk that much about that. But what do you think are some key things that was the reason that you wrote this book and some some things that we can we can give people? Well, if rich dad poor dad was high school, yeah. this was graduate school. Okay. So it's basically saying many of the same things, a, a little higher level of thought. So a person should start with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If they don't like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, they'll hate this book. Perfect. Because they went to school, they got a job, they're working hard, they're saving money, they're getting out of debt, and they're in the stock market. Right. They're getting screwed. Right. But if you want to find out why guys like me don't do that, then you read, you read fake. The biggest thing about fake is, you know, the, the dollar became fake, the U.S. dollar became fake money in 71. But it's the fake teachers. Why would you listen to a poor person? Why would you listen to a poor person about money? And that was my poor dad, very good man, PhD, but he always says, go to school, get a job, work hard, pay taxes, get out of debt, and invest in the stock market. He's trying to hypnotize me. And my rich dad, thank God I had a rich dad, he goes, you gotta be an idiot to follow that advice. And so, you're a very bright young man to pick up Rich Dad Poor Dad is only a book on accounting. My cash flow game is only a book on accounting. That's uh, a, a game of, it's yeah. all, uh, But if, if you don't know accounting, you don't have accountability. Yeah. You know, you have accountability in your life. And then you can question when somebody tells you to invest in the stock market, I go, well, when do I get my money back? So in fake, I talk about the infinite return. I never use my money. I don't need to save money. I use debt 100% of the time, and I don't pay taxes. So that's kind of what you find out in fake, you know, fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. Because every time a teacher told me, to, you know, to get a job, I said, you gotta be kidding me. She goes, if you don't get good grants, you won't get a job. And I said, oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that, you know. And the teacher would go nuts. And they go, why don't you want a job? So, so I'll pay taxes then. Ah, you got to pay your taxes. And I said, well, what about this? So I took real estate courses, not because I like real estate, because real estate is about debt and taxes. Right. So the more debt I use, which is real money, debt is real money, the less tax I pay. And especially with the interest rates right now, that have been lowest in the last 5,000 years or something like Mo that? Money is cheap right now. Zero. Yeah. Get yeah. it free. Yeah. Why would you save it? Why would you save it when they print it? It's until you question, all the young people, they just question what's inside that head. Who hypnotized you? Parents, most of the time. Pro yeah. Most probably. And yeah. were your parents rich or poor? Probably poor. Well, hard working, right? paying taxes, yeah. they went to school, if you're middle class. Yeah. So for the people. Do you think Donald Trump's sons pay taxes? None of them pay taxes. No. Do you think they have jobs? No. 
In that book, I have Jared Kushner, who's Ivanka Trump's husband. Yeah. And the New York Times interviews him. <laughs> the, the reporter is an A student, you know, smart guy with a job, and he just can't understand how Kushners, who are richer than the Trumps, Jewish family richer than the Trumps, yeah, yeah, yeah. how they get away with not paying taxes. And this reporter was going crazy it's in, the, in the book, in fake. He just couldn't understand it because he's been hypnotized. So it's a collision of ideas. You know, so when I say I don't pay taxes, then this whole, th you're cheating, you're a crook, you're a criminal comes up. Mm. And then they can't hear me. And I talk about trade, you know, investing. I invest as an insider. And for the average person who knows very little, they say, well, insider trading is illegal. No, it's not. But they've been programmed to think it's illegal. There are certain forms of investing where insider trading is illegal. But for the most part, it isn't illegal. Hmm. But what fires off because they've been hypnotized, oh, insider trading, he's a crook, oh, and he doesn't pay taxes. Do you think I'd be writing about it if I was a criminal? So I, I wrote fake so people could challenge the hypnosis in their brains, you know, go to school, work hard, pay taxes, get out of debt. I used debt as money because in 1971, money became debt. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems like an underlying psychological problem more or less than information because the information, it's available. You, you, you do such an amazing job. Well, you, you put your life against this goal, basically. And I'm, I'm curious about why you do that and why you continue to do it because I think it's... It's not intuitive to people. Like he can make all this money and he spends his time with me in an interview teaching young people. Like it's not it's not exactly the the most ROI use of your time, right? So, uh, in, if you look at it from the outside, um, but uh, what do you think is is so? I if if I'm a, a young person listening, I'm gonna listen to this. What do I have to, to do to break the hypnosis? Because most people that don't want to hear it will dismiss the message. Yes. So should I meditate? Should I spend time thinking yes. about it? Should I just, okay, I perfect. love meditation. I think everybody should meditate, you know, to, to cure the conflict that's going inside. Because I purposely say those things to create conflict. Perfect. Because if you don't change those thoughts, you'll wind up like my poor dad. Yeah. You know, very highly educated poor guy who worked very hard all his life. I, I felt for him. Yeah. Then he got fired by the people he challenged. And he found that his PhD meant nothing. Yeah. You know, PhD always stands for poor, helpless, and desperate. So the moment they threw him out of the <laughs> That's a great acronym. You know, <laughs> so the moment they threw him out of the school system, he was like a you know, this stray dog who couldn't feed himself on the streets. He just, he just, the streets just ate him alive. Whereas an entrepreneur, I love the streets, you know, it's like dog eat dog out there, it's fun, it's game, you know, it's like playing rugby. But, my, but most hmm. academics can't play the game of rugby because it's too nasty. But some guys, I love the game. Yeah. I love sports. I love it so much. Yeah. That's amazing. And what do you think, for example, if you look, if you look against, we've been in the longest, well, growth period of <laughs> ever. Where, where do you think, <laughs> why, why are you laughing? Growth? Go ahead. Um, People, people look at it now and because they're scared and they're safety oriented thinking, oh, I couldn't really start now because there's a financial crisis coming. Yeah. So why would I start now? So it's, it's still the safety that they're looking for. So what would you think about, what would you say about that, about the financial crisis coming up? If, well, there should be some sort of correction happening in the future. Well, let me ask you this. If you're, yeah. you, you had bought a ticket to get on the Titanic, right? Yeah. And you knew it was gonna sink, what would you do? Not buy the ticket. Well, let's say you already bought the ticket. Okay, I'll build the best boat to get out of it. I would be getting ready to get off of it as quickly as possible. Okay. You know? I, I would be looking at life rafts and checking things out and you know things and, like that. Yeah. Because we're going down. Yeah. And this is the difference. Crashes make the rich richer. So what happens is, there's an old saying in investing, the bear goes up, the, I mean, the bull goes up the stairs. Those bulls and bears, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the bull goes up the stairs, the bear goes out the window. So if you want to get rich quick, I, I like the crashes. Because you can buy low. Oh, shit. It comes down so fast. So if you, you can do it in stocks. You can short the thing. You can do, you know, a naked put. Yeah. You can be instantly quick. 
but it's slow going up, but it's fast when it crashes. So right now, if I was a young person, I'd be taking probably a stock options course mm -hmm. to trade the market coming down because you'll get rich faster that way. It takes about five years to practice that. But I love crashes. You know, I get really excited about a crash. Unfortunately, most people get wiped out. But nonetheless, the facts are crashes make the rich richer. That's why fake is fight fake with facts. Yeah. So if you want to get rich quick, you know, it's when the Titanic is going down. You can sell lifeboats. <laughs> that's a great. That's a great analogy. And what do you th like about your general purpose? And we're going to wrap up here in, in a couple of minutes. Um, but about your general purpose, I'm really, really curious because most people think. Again, I'm, I'm trying to think from the perspective of, of 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 the stereotype of the conditioning, let's say. And most people think, well, if I'm as rich as Robert, why would I spend time doing all these things? Even so, why would I spend time educating people? And even so, why would I even, even work anymore? Because if I have enough money in my head, I'm done. I, don't need, I need to get a vacation in Hawaii, which is exactly the reason yeah, that yeah, they don't exactly. do that. But what drives you to keep doing what you're doing? And what's your purpose going forward? Because you don't have to do any of this. And right. I think it's important for people to grasp that. You're a very smart young man. Yeah. It's, well, I thank you. No, no, no you are very intuitive. Is that... Um, I don't need the money. That's the reason I do it. You know, I retired at 47. I had, yeah. I had more, more than enough money, and people kept asking my wife and I. Said, "How'd you guys?" She was 37. You know, and she didn't marry me for my money because I didn't have money when we started. Yeah. I lost a business just before I met her, and we just made it back. So anyway, they kept asking us, "How'd you guys do it?" So, "Do you have a job? No. Do you have a retirement plan? No. Did you save money? No." So they kept asking us, and we created the cash flow game so they could understand income statements, balance sheets, statements of cash flow. Which so, highly recommend that I took that. Yeah, so the cash flow game is yeah. a, how you can have fun learning it's about great. the most boring subject called accounting. And you have fun, it's like playing Monopoly, but what makes rich cash flow different than Monopoly is a financial statement. Yeah. Because your banker only wants to see your financial statement. Banker doesn't want your grades or what school you went to. Yeah. They want to know your financials. So when the markets crash, my financials are so strong, bankers threw money at me. Mm. They still call Because you're the only one that has good financial statements at that point. Well, if there's they a know, high, high I know, percentage. They know I can take their debt and make money from debt. The average person will take debt and lose money. So, be, so cash flow, the game, and even Rich Dad Poor Dad, you take debt and make money. The average person takes debt and loses money, so they don't want they don't want to give you any more money. So that's what so that's what drives me on. So when I went to military school, I, I didn't go to regular school. I went to a military academy in New York. The first lesson, the first word they teach us is what's your mission, 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 and mission is spiritual. So that's why when I graduated from military school, I didn't have to go fight, but I felt the need to go fight, so I joined the Marine Corps to go fight. And when I came back, my, again, my poor dad says, why don't you become an airline pilot? I said, go to school, get a job, you know, become a pilot, because you can make a lot of money, and you'll pay a lot of taxes, and you can, you know, like, I could hear the hypnosis coming in. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. So my rich dad, so my poor dad says, go get, get my master's degree, get my MBA, which I started, a uh, waste of time. And my rich dad said, you have to learn about debt and taxes. So I took a real estate course. Mm. I, still, I say the same thing, take real estate courses, take stock, stock trading courses, you know, uh, I take bond courses. I just learn about the game of money. It's a game. And have some patience, yeah. right? It takes about five years to get good at anything. Okay, perfect, you know, because that's a good expectation for people. People think that in yeah, three that, months they'll figure it out. No. Perfect. If you're gonna be a stock trader, it's five years and 50,000 bucks minimum. You'll, that's what it'll cost you. Which is less than one year of college, yeah. usually at Harvard, so yeah. it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, but you have to make mistakes to learn. But our schools punish you for making mistakes. And then they also punish you for asking for help because that's called cheating. I call it cooperation. Yeah. So the, everything is opposite from school. You know, entrepreneurs are not gonna make good employees. So you might as well think of your conditioning and do the opposite, and you're probably better off. Well, you gotta change. Go to school, get a job, save money, pay taxes. Yeah. You know, the question right now is, how do I make so much money, I use debt, and I pay no taxes legally? I said, I wouldn't be saying that if I was crooked about it. But I don't have to hide because I do it legally. 
And you explain how that works in, in this book. Yeah, and, I, well, you know, as best I yeah. can. You know, the, the, my study has been li a lifelong study. So I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm making money as we're speaking right now. I have 7,000 real estate properties. I have oil wells. I have golf courses. I have a commercial buildings. So money's just pouring in whether I work or not. But I'm still studying because that's how the money keeps pouring in. Yeah. I'm watching the horizon. You know, it's like a, a, you know, on the ocean, you know, it's like, where's the next storm coming? Yeah. Oh, like that. Yeah. No or worry. like in the case of the Titanic, when's the next iceberg coming? Yeah. And there's a lot of icebergs right now, and we're all in this one big Titanic. And the question, you know, right now, I'd be manufacturing lifeboats. <laughs> yeah, for a living, for sure. Yeah. So two things, and, and we'll, we'll end with this. One thing, and I, I was really fascinated, I, th I think you spoke about it in an interview about Jonathan Haidt's book, The Coddling of the American Mind. It's, it's not the American Mind, it's right. the coddling of the everybody's mind, basically. Correct. And people are, the, 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 my question would be, what would be your advice for people that are looking to, to really strengthen themselves and toughen up, because that's, when people hear this advice, then they go out in the world, and me included, but let's say I've done some sports, you've obviously had military training and, and all the things that had that, I think, evolved discipline in you, I, I'm thinking. Um, but what would, what would you be your advice to toughen up? Because otherwise, any challenge that faces you, you're just gonna fade and go back to safety. Correct, correct, correct. Well, I think that's one of the biggest problems is that yeah. people, the word is called resilience. Okay. If you, you know, like, the greatest athlete in, the, in my time is Tiger Woods. Well, he just won a championship again. Yeah, but so. he went way up, and he came down as, you know, his wife caught him cheating, you know, everything, the humiliation, and especially as a black guy cheating on a white woman. I had so many women get so upset. How dare you cheat on a white woman? You know, white cheats. That's, what That's not a thing to do in yeah, 2014. You know, I mean, like, what difference does it make? You know, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. just crack up at people. And then his back goes out, he has surgery. And after this long down period he comes roaring back up to the top and if you've ever been to augusta the golf course with a masters was played that is the toughest golf course i have ever seen i don't know how those guys play that course yeah you have to be a mountain goat to play that course you know and these guys are taking shots from down here the greens up here and these guys are going so he came back so if there's a story of resilience and determination and a comeback it's Tiger Woods. I mean, he, my esteem of, I just, I'm in awe of that guy. He is really a great man to come from the top to the bottom, back to the top, you know. And we all have that in us, mm. except in school, we told don't make mistakes. You know, if you fail, you're stupid. Well, he came back, he made him stronger. Yeah, good for him. So last question, what do you think, and, and thank you so much for your time, this has been amazing. So what do you think is, is there a chance for the education system of the future to actually create abundance, wealthy people, free people, and so on? Or should it be taken on to people like yourself that create kind of like private systems of education and spread, spread the knowledge to people? What do you think about that? Well, I'm doing it as private citizen, you know, and I stay outside the skill system. But if you look, yeah. I think you read this book, I think you'll notice on this, it says fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. Yeah. It's the same thing. See, it's all one big system. Yeah. The only way they can pull off the fake money is by having fake teachers. And the only way you can buy fake assets is by having fake money and fake teachers. So it's a, it's a, very, it's a very good reinforcing loop. <laughs> and that's why I mean, I'm just saying out here to the young people, question this, go to school, get a job, work hard, pay taxes, save money, get out of debt. Until that is questioned, and then ask the question, why would I be saying that at the risk of going to jail if it wasn't legal? Mm. That's the question. So guys, the rich get richer because what we do is legal, but you've been told it's illegal. Amazing. So you're not paying taxes is legal if you're an entrepreneur, but it's illegal if you're an employee. <laughs> Any last thing you think is worth mentioning to the people listening? the young people listening and kind of trying to figure this out, and we'll end with that. Well, I think the key is young people, because the system of fake money, fake teachers, fake assets, they screwed me, my generation. My generation is never gonna retire. Their medical expenses are gonna go through the roof just when America goes broke. But they didn't just screw the old guys, they screw the young, the millennials. 
So they're coming out of school deeply in debt and still haven't learned anything about money. So this system of fake money, fake teachers, fake assets screws everybody. Not only in Romania, but all over the world. Mm. So that's really, if you can think, you know, comprehend something that big, then you can make your own personal choices and changes. Perfect. Thank you so much, Robert, for your time. Thank you. Everybody that's listening. Hope people act on this. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hey guys, this is Catalin, and I'm doing this really interesting giveaway. I just had an interview with Robert Kiyosaki, number one best-selling author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I want to give away 10 of, 10 of copies of his new book, Fake. Fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. What you have to do is go listen to the interview. There should be a link somewhere for you to listen to it, and post on either Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever you want, or send me an email with your one takeaway from the interview. And I'm gonna choose 10 of those uh, at random, and we're gonna give them uh, one copy of his new book, Fake. So go ahead and listen to the interview. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, leave a comment below in, in, in the interview and uh, post your takeaway and win a copy of the, of the book. Thank you so much.